and fall in my fellow scouts to another third day's Reforged 5v3 battle replay today at Anduin, I believe this map is called. Today's replay was sent to me by Joran, who is again one of the defenders today. <laughs> this is not going to get old at all. Um, if you guys would like to send me through other third age Reforged replays like this, or other Total War replays like from Napoleon Total War 3, Rome 2, Warhammer 2, just to name a few, there are links here displayed on your screen, which you can find in the description below. There's also a link to join my Discord server Scouts Reconnaissance, where you can post all manner of Total War replays to the Battle Replay sub-channel. There's also an area for YouTubers to post their own content to, tell the community about their channels, as well as collab with other YouTubers for future projects if they so choose. I also have various funding options available, which has really helped out the channel and my Discord, including YouTube membership options, which will give members access to custom emojis and badges. And with that, let's get started today. So, if you guys do enjoy my content and can't support my channel any other way, the smashing like button helps just as much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell for notifications so you stay up to date with all the latest content as it drops. Leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. And with that, let's get into Joran's army today, who is in Ladderus. So those in Ladderus lovers, back off. We have Souls Rivendell here. The Ladderus Guardians armored up. Brunine Riverwards. The Ladderus Guardians armored up again. And some God Helm Enuar armored up. We have over here some Gwaitai Arthane. We have two units of Archers of Rivendell here, not armoured up however. And we have some Archers of Rivendell, somewhere. And some Elder Enemy Spearmen. We have some Matter of Sentries, I think two units here. Some Nointina Warriors, two units. Some Elder Enemy Spearmen, and some Great Day Marine Dan armoured up. We've also got some Swords of Rivendell, if I didn't say that before. And Brunan Riverwoods, and Matter of Guardians armoured up. And we have some Gwathai Rotador, one of the best CAD units in the game, short of the Witchrum Inquisitors, which I personally feel are the best overall. And that comes to his first ally today, Rune, given by Awesome Boss Death, who knows Awesome better than Awesome. We have some Kamul Shadow Bows here, some Loken Arim, some Dragon's Wrath Crossbows, some Kamul's Chosen, and some Dragon's Wrath Guildsmen, hidden. We've also got some Easter on Crossbows here, armored up all the way. And some Loke, uh, oh, Kamul Shadow Guard again. And Loke Flag Rim, and Loke Gamprin, and Loke Scion Rim. Possibly two to three units of each in this massive blob here. Some Kamul's Dragon Knights there, also a very good unit. We have some Dragon's Wrath Warlords. I have mixed feelings about these guys. Never really seem to do too well, but they are supposedly a mid to elite tier unit. More on the elite tier side, apparently. We have some Loke Gamprin, and some more Eastron Crossbows there. And I think maybe we've got three ends of Crossbows overall, as I said earlier. And that's all I can see there at the moment. We've got some cool Shadow Guard and Shadow Bows, we do know that. And that brings us to the final ally today, Gondor, given by Gothmog. And I don't know how any, I don't have any Gothmog analogies there, sorry Goth. We have some Marksmen of Kir Andros, two units there. Some Warders of Minas Ethel. Veterans of Eskidiath, not armored up at all, that's a basic model right there. Some Gondor Archers, armored up all the way. Some Ethelian Rangers. We have some Citadel Guard here, two units. Some Milotian Honor Guard, Raven Helms of Care Andros, two units there, two units of Pelagon Marines, and some Raven Helms of Care Andros. We've also got a Trebuchet here, some Milotian Honor Guard, some Citadel Guard, and two units of Gondor Infantry armored up. And that brings us to the first of five attacking armies today. The first of which is Numenor, commanded by Lord Touch Me. Lord, uh, that's a weird name. We have Royal Legion of Amenolos here, Trebuchet, we have Pharisim Soul Masters, we have Numenorean Cohort here, two units. We have Seafarers and Nindamos here, three units. Numenorean Cohort again, two there. We've also got two units of Numenorean Shield Guard, and two units of Numenorean Steel Bows. We'll keep our eye out, of course, for Indian Shadow Bows, but for the most part, I think that's it there. Alright, next we have the Realm of Lothorian, given by Joey One Kenobi. And we've got some Lorian Spearmen here. Two units there. We have Lion and Axeman, two units. Some Riders of the Golden Wood, Watchers of the Golden Wood, and Kindred of Calibron. We've also got two units of Lion and Archers here, and two units of Lion and Swordmasters, make that three, four total. Jeez. That's a lot of Swordmasters, actually. Alright. Next we have the Realm of Angmar, come by Tsunami. Okay, so we got two units from Scourge Raiders and Hammerguard here, all armoured up. We've also got some Witch on Blackguard here, along with some Trolls of Goodbad and Trolls of Angmar. Next we have some Witch on Inquisitors, some Angmar Marauders, and some Blackwatch Legion. These guys here are armoured up, I believe. Actually, this is going for a bit closer look. Yes, they are armoured. 
And we have Guardians of Karandum armored as well. Alright, I couldn't see the witches there, but given the, the size of his army, I'd be surprised if he didn't bring them. We have next Isengard, commanded by Bloodbath and McGrath. We've got some war riders here, along with some Urukai pikemen in the area, along with some Urukai crossbows, and some London clansmen towards the front. Now you have crossbows there, some Urukai archers, some more pikes, half orc vanguard, trolls of the white hand I saw earlier. We've also got some Urukai raiders, looks to be two units here. Urukai infantry, also two units. Nazga High and Lurt's Hunting Pack, which is your body piercing ranger unit of the Orc side of things. And next we have the final attacker today, I believe, Rohan, commanded by Mevin. And we've got some Rigmark Skirmishes here, so you can see. We've also got some Medusal Guard, Westmark Spearmen, Helmless Hammers, two units of Westmark Marshals, two units of Westmark Infantry, and Westmark Spearmen. Next we have some civilians. We've also got some Eastmark Spearmen, I think, here too, yes. Javelin unit and Light Tear Spear unit. The Javelin first and foremost, remember that. And two units of Halmingus. And we'll come back to the rest of the army later if anything else is there that we missed. And with that, let's get the siege started. Enjoy! Now we clearly have a grace period as two defenders are outside the city of Andor. And so we'll do a small cut here, guys, and come back once we feel like the combat is about to begin. See you soon. Alright guys, we have our first volley being fired, and mainly because Lothorian got in way too close and is rightly being peppered as a result. I'm not sure why Joey... Well, Joey had also obviously had a plan, but this is not going according to the plan. But he definitely exposed himself. And Joram pounced on that mistake. We've got a fair amount of kills there, we've got a lot of dead elves on the ground. Now one thing I have noticed about Reforged is once the archers fire away at the volley, the volleys tend to be pretty darn accurate no matter how far away the unit is once they fire. Especially when it comes to elves, if you're firing with them with Haradrim or um, low tier or Gondor archers, you know, any any archer unit that's not the elves, good luck with that. Not in a long distance shot, especially snugger archers. You could probably stand 10 meters away from the Snugger Archer unit, and maybe one or two, maybe five arrows might hit you out of 200. Snugger definitely not known for their accuracy. But they fire a ton of arrows. We've got Nimmer and Steel Bows here, mixing in with Nimmer and Shield Guard, a tempting target. And one of which I think is drawing Gothmog's fire. Looking for the arrows in the sky, I see them. But they're going for the seafarers in the moss. Yeah, that makes sense to a degree. They are a javelin unit and a big threat to the Gondorian forces. Far more than the steel bows are. The steel bows might be AP, but they require um, a better angle to fire than the, the um, seafarers do. He's almost in the safe zone. But once he gets there, he has to sort of move to the left. He has to stick as close as he can to the hillside here, so Gothamon can't shoot him. If he goes more to the right, that's just going to help Gothamon get a bee on him to march into Candros. Like right now, the Martians should probably fire in because the seafarers are exposed right now. And they won't get a volley off. If Lord wants to use them, he should have started to get, so he should have got them going much earlier. You see Citadel guys starting to walk all over him. We've got a little bit of a cat battle happening over here. Between the Dragon Lords, the Ritual Inquisitors, and the Riddermark Skirmishes, but Dragon Lords struggling a little bit here against the Ritual Inquisitors, so it's not too surprising. Awesome's trying to get him away. There's the Kalul's Dragon Knights. He's over here. It's about that right at all. Looks like the Kamul's Dragon Knights are still inside the city. Who's this? Now oh, this there's some sort of unit that's invisible here. It's driving me crazy. I can't pin it down. Oh, there you go. The Thelian Rangers, okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, Dragon Lords won't get away, I don't think. 
So the warlords have armor, but it's heavy. Makes them slower. They have more armor. And that's why the Inquisitors are catching up to them so quickly. Armor doesn't do a whole lot for you against the Ritual Inquisitor. Yeah, well, yeah, one got away. Good for him. Maybe he can charge into the civilians. And he indeed might. Let's see. The Lone Dragonite. Okay, that was disappointing. Guard the Hummingus. Okay. Let's see what our is with Let's see the Cool Rangers. Let's have a look here. Not about moving up his forces, but haven't yet engaged. He's trying to get a shot on Lake of Rim and Swords of Rivendell. We've got some other enemy spearmen here. We don't have any. We've got some God Helm, I suppose, nearby. But the God Helm better open fire if they're going to. We can't stand there. Now, yeah, Bobak getting in way too close. Okay, pressure's on. Can Zoran get there in time? They're winding up. They're about to fire. And we've got a volley off. Remember, we have two units of crossbows in the area. Okay, the God Helm did open up, eventually. And the Swords of Rivendell here are armoured, which is why they've lasted so long. Well, they got hammered here just now. If they move fast enough... Not the best opening there for the defenders. God Helm's firing on the crossbows, we saw it before. Lord's yet to go in. He's got his steel bows here, firing on the Citadel Guard. Definitely a good idea. I mean, why not? Okay, that's a trebuchet going off there. I have no idea where it is though. We know the attack as well, there's a trebuchet there, and one of the trebuchets is actually destroyed. Yep. And there's Gosmon's trebuchet, okay, there it is. And one of his is destroyed, so now it's a now the game is afoot. We've got Witcher Inquisitors here charging into the Citadel Guard. I'm not sure that was a good idea. We lost three. Done. Why not? Still working. We got that out there. We got the war brides out there. Is it worth our roach at all? They're targeting the Black Watch Legion. So none of left these guys exposed. Solid charge there. Again, charging trolls into cavalry might seem like a good idea. Against the Great Thorachidor, it really isn't. Be pulling away because of the Widermark skirmishes there. But maybe he's just going to allow the attacker there to just get calm, but also know just to be calm. And the attacking lane's attention is probably occupied elsewhere. We've got Lauren and Archers over here from Joey being fired upon. We've got Mr. Crossbows here. 
looking for the next mark. It is 5 to 6%. Again, the attack has not yet begun. So far, we'll just say a few tip for tats exchanges. But um, no serious assaults as of yet. The Gokmog has committed two units of Citadel Guard, however, out front. The Marks of Kandros might assist. Gothmog did not choose to reveal his Athelian Rangers and fire on the Moonland Cohort. He obviously wants to get the attackers complacent and thinking that the Rangers aren't there. Commit a ton of forces to this attack and then nail them from the rear. He's trying to use standard shot here. Uh, but the, okay, so hang on, let's just head over here and have a look. Alright, so the winner of the trebuchet battle is Gothmob today. He's destroyed both units now. So yeah, he won the trebuchet fight, good for him. Okay, the last one of Candles firing directly into the back here of the Nurian cohort. That is ideal. If you're the player doing that, you're loving it. Shooting on the back, obviously there's just an armor there and they go down faster. And also being hit from the front doesn't help things. Cohort's here. Cohort, sorry, is at 28. They're firing right neat on the trebuchet crew. Kind of an odd choice. Okay, I got most of these troops under control. I think he has. Okay, this unit here should run back immediately and just break this unit, it's already wavering. Okay guys, I was searching for the Great Theoretical where I came upon these, this pile of dead Riddermark skirmishes. It looks like the player just was moving his cavalry around and realized there were stakes there and unfortunately he lost a lot of them. Happens more often than you think. Alright, but Law's definitely picking up his assault compared to his allies. Joe One Kenobi is committing a couple of units here and there, but he's not really yet to go to the same level as Lord is right here. It's probably for the best. But remember, they don't know about the Athenian Rangers. You've got to wonder how many units of Citadel Guard Gothmog actually has. Seafarers is moving up. This unit looks like it's seen some action. Wondering when he'll change targets. The Pelican Marines firing in. As well as Seafarers. Okay, so we've got 60. Lauren actually that broke the line. Not broken. Oh, what's that for that trebuchet? Okay, Gothmog sending in more forces, looking to plug this leak and drive the attackers back. And it's working.
the fresh unit of Numeroid Cohort coming in. Two units of them, in fact. The Mocking Honor Guard is here as well. Now, the Raven Helm should immediately try to run around the Axeman and get into the Seafarer ranks, you'd have to think. Now, I don't know what's happening here, but um, veterans of Skiliath need to stop firing. They don't have a mark. Well, they actually did have a mark. They've got their own Axeman, which they are now firing up on. So, you know, good on both mods there for switching targets. There's a blob of throwing troops at base trying to hit. That surprised me. One of the arrows are actually clearing that ledge there, so I wouldn't think they would be able to. Okay, more Gondorians moving in. Helga Marines trying to drive back the center of the Warren and Axeman. The steel bows standing by. They can hit probably the Gondor Archers most easily, most easily, out of all the units here. So it does look like they were firing upwards trying to hit maybe the Raven Helms. Instead of the other side here. Okay, maybe stepping up his assault a little bit. We've seen a lot of dead Siren in there. Probably as a result of all the javelins from the East Mark action. The fire grim looks like they're being committed to the front. Green should be able to win that one. Rise of the Golden Woods. They're standing by. Let's see it. Archers of Rimdale coming over from Joran. Warden, Warden's against Ethel on standby. And Pelican Marines continuing to fire in there. Why is he moving the catapult or the trebuchet that far? Cool. Pelican Marines yet to go in. We've used up all their ammo. Alright, let's go check out the center since it's been a while since we've been in. Well, that's Hunting Pack. Right there for the picking. Force There's a Gwatha Rachel, they're not dead, that's good to see. Well, that's Hunting Pack. Where are they going? I think they're targeting the Norrington Warriors. Okay, I got Helen UI shooting upwards, but. Well, past history is any indication, that's not good, good news there for Lewis Hunting Back. As you can see, the God Helm just doesn't miss. Good strikes here, good strikes. We've taken down nine of them. But 40 is very much it's still a game changer in this battle. The Kabul's Dragon Knights probably should keep them away from the main line. Okay, 
Okay, well, Mevin just bring up his rid of my skirmishes just to throw the javelins into the like side and the like flag rim. The elevation provided from the horses does make it easier for them to get shots off on the ring's front line here. So Mevin definitely using his skirmishes well, correctly. Westmark Spear also helping drive the line forward. Just have a look at this. Someone did a number on these guys. That's a lot of East Front Cross from there. It could be the Helmingus. I'm going to wager it was the Helmingus. But the Dinim Shadows. Or the Ethereum Rangers. Nah, hang on. We've got Amatus over there. Amatus doesn't have any Rangers. Ruin has the Camus Shadow Bows. So, I'm probably thinking, I am thinking of the Camus Shadow Bows because they're basically the same model anyway. The Camus Shadow Bows should be here to fire in a couple of volleys into this force here, so it basically kneecaps it. They'll drive it off the field for sure. And Siam Rim is a mid tier spear unit. We have seen cab charges take them out in the past. But if they're in shield wall formation and braced, more often than not the charge will fail, but it can sometimes succeed. But the odds are in their favour to be able to repel a cab charge. But I suppose that doesn't really apply here because Rumark Skirmishes in this case right now are no threat to them whatsoever. They're not getting through this line anytime soon if they try, but they cut down where they stand. I was sort of on a tangent there because I have seen in the past the Luxus Iron Rim get totally destroyed from a, in, a, in a situation where it looked like that just shouldn't happen. They, I think they're in shield wall formation braced with heavy cavalry coming at them, and the cavalry hit them. It killed still half the unit, despite the fact that it was braced and facing towards them. And that seemed almost impossible to me, but it just shouldn't happen with prepared speed. Mode. Okay, we've got some cool shadows here. It's not going to use them. As I say, get them out of there. Nor should they be used. Unless they're going to be firing onto this line here, they should be used at all. They must be pulled back. Where's my game with Triana? Hamingas coming up. I was going to say heavily depleted, but 62, they're at 60% strength. Alright, let's have a look here. Barrel Whites look like they were moving in. Which one Scourge Raiders firing across into the Madras Guardians? And Bruno Rewards. That is great fire there coming in from Angmar. The Orange should be more switched on to receive that. Still falling fast. Okay, we've got Awesome's response here, but it might be too late. Oh no. We've got the Urukai Raiders acting as a meat shield for the Urukai Pikes. And instead of trying to take out the. Oh, hang on. What's it? That looks like. Yeah, okay, it's coming from Dragon Draft Guildsman. That's good fire there from him. You don't, don't often see the Drag Strath Gilsman get it that good. No, it's possible they're out, ain't I? No, that's a good job there from Bud Bath. He soaked up a ton of crossbow fire there. And 
Godlog, it looks like, still hasn't revealed his Athenian angles as of yet. If he hasn't done so, I mean, it's a huge weapon, a huge secret weapon in the defender's arsenal. Farazim Swordmaster's here down to 7, Royal Leeds is moving up. We've got still the Knocking Honor Guard here. Do we have two units of the Knocking Honor Guard? And it's the same unit, I think. Veterans of Skelly are firing directly into the Royal Legion of Armenos. No, we do have two units of the North Leon Guard. I was seeing that right. This unit is 27, that one's 56. Okay. So we've got Martin of Ke Andros here. They still have ammo. So far the Gondorian defense is holding. It doesn't look like the attackers will break through at the moment. We have reinforcements coming in. But we've seen some action it looks like. It is 32 to 42 at the moment. Okay, so awesome right now, it looks like he's holding off Rohan. Joran is holding the center. He gets Isengard and Anger, with Awesome's help. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Snuggest skirmishes are here. We have 121. Is the Snuggest skirmishes going after the right target? Maybe they are, but it does surprise me. They're going up the United Centuries. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more javelins come in there. Trials of the right hand moving in. Valentina Warriors, maybe looking to shit the Urukai Pikemen in the back here. Good idea, but with all the trolls coming in, it looks like the attacker's plan here is just to smash through and get into the archer ranks. There's some great Marine there moving up to stop them. Yeah, if I was if I was the attackers here, I'd probably pull my trolls back and not let them take on the Great Marine Dane alone. Great Marine Dane is an exceptionally powerful unit. And arm it up, and if they have the attack arm upgrade, they're even far more dangerous. They could win that fight against the trolls. The trolls need support from the infantry to take down the Great Marine Dane. Guardians moving up. Trolls of Aim are going after the second unit of 19 Warriors. The attack is showing a sense of fear towards the 19 Warriors. Guards of War Tank, because I don't think I saw before on the front lines. 42 to 53. Trolls of Gundabad on their left flank. Trolls of Angmar bursted through. Breath of Rotor charging into the Trolls of Gundabad. They took out one. Ring down the end of 38. See the Marine Dane just slaying that troll in half. Or cut that troll in half. No, I'm also slaying because they have hounds after all. Mool's Dragonite's also looking to charge into the trolls a little bit bad. Yeah, Joran's let the cavalry take care of the trolls, so I reckon. Alright, 
Looks like the attackers are going pretty much all in now on the main assault. We've got a lot of troops coming in here. We've got Kamul's Shadowbows nearby. But they don't have a good vantage point where they are. More importantly, they're not even trying to fire, which is a bit strange. But it's awesome, they're scrambling to get here so I can fire straight this massive blob of enemy troops. This is this is a jewel of a prize. Right for Awesome's taking. He's just got to pick it up. It's all one good night how warriors are firing in, but you need body piercing ammunition in this context. And this is massive. Also could rack up so many kills and just gets into the right position. But he's not leaving them. Looks like Rune is struggling to hold back Rohan here. And Rohan should definitely press his advantage. He's got he's got an edge over Rune here. He can maneuver forces around, he can outflank his enemy. You can see Rohan taking advantage of the gaps in Awesome's lines here. More importantly, I want to get back here just to see whether he takes up. He still doesn't move with the most out of us. Oh, dude, what's going on? Every team has its strategy. Half the enemy force remains. We've got Elder Enemy answers, so definitely Joran's trying to take advantage of this. He's putting the Elder Enemy answers right where I wanted the Kamul Shadowverse to go. This is where you got to communicate with your ally. You've got to know what, what assets he has in place. And use them to the team's advantage. Looks like the Kamul Shadowverse are finally firing, but they're firing on a section of the force which there aren't too many troops here at all. All well and good, but this is the prize right here. This is what he should have been firing on. Basically, Joran's just done this because he doesn't want to impede the accuracy of his 19 warriors, which he was earlier. But as you can see, all the other archers have to do is aim for maybe the Black Watch Legion. Or pick a unit that's yeah, towards the front of the line. So most of the arrows can clear the ledge here. Some still aren't. I really think the other archers should fire over here. That way more of the arrows, if not all of the arrows, can clear that ledge. And you can maximize the killing potential of that unit. We got the Eastern crossbows firing. And we have Dragon's Wrath crossbows. So again, these two units alone could have destroyed the attackers down there. I think Tsunami and Bloodbath were exceptionally lucky there. That Awesome didn't do that. Or well, they would have been annihilated. Guaranteed. They still might be. It looks like the defense have enough assets here to hold them back and defeat them, but um, had he had Awesome used the Dragon's Wrath crossbows and Dream Shadowbows, this attack would have been finished 5-10 minutes ago. Easy. They're firing in right now. We've got the original Scourge Raiders here trying to shoot the other enemy answers, but as you can see, hardly any of the axes are clearing the top there. It is 73 to 80, still very close. We've got Rise of the Golden Wood here. 
We got Bright Eye Roger Lord in the mix. They might be wanting to chase off the Raja to go in the wood. Who are they trying to hit? Are they trying to hit the Raja to go in the wood? Are they possible? Oh, yeah, yeah. Both our Rochador was in the way there. Fortunately, Rune has that little feature built into them where if there's a friendly troop in their path, they won't fire. This is great news for Joran. He could have lost it. Anyway. The Moors chosen against the Helm's Hammers. Helm's Hammers probably should win that fight. The Moors chosen are a very decent unit, but we've got Medusa Guard throwing javelins directly into their back, so yeah. This battle is definitely going to favour Rohan for sure. But Mevin choosing to actually save some of his ammo for later. Might have felt like he used up enough of the ammunition there, and wanted to use it elsewhere. The Moors Shadow Bow is out of ammunition. Joran posts yet the both our Rochador moving. They have to take out the Rochador while he has a chance. Both are not going to go for it. Be a little careful, man. The general is vulnerable. Maybe just probably take out the general while he can. How's Gothmog going? It's been a while since we've seen it. It looks like he might have been defeated. Oh no, he's still got troops in the area. Oh, I swear I saw attacking forces get through there. Oh no. Okay, I have to be this immunizing cohort before. So, by the skin of his teeth, it looks like Gothmog will hold on here. He did well, that was a hard fought victory. 85 to 86, so still ruddy close. Got a couple of units spazzing out there. I don't know where the general is. Probably a good thing he's not in these ranks. He might be dead already if he was. I don't know, yeah. These guys, I don't think these guys are dead. They just glitched out. This is the first time I've seen this actually. Looking at That's weird. Oh, wait. There's the general. He's in a unit of Gondor infantry. Or maybe it's the Warren's Minus Ethel. One of the two. Unclear. But I'm definitely leaning towards the Warren's Minus Ethel. Okay. I know I said that I was leaning towards Gothmog winning this fight, but I can see it taking a turn for the worst here for Gothmog. I'm in fact, ending out towards Lothorian, Joe Long Kenobi taking victory here. Despite the fact the Gondor troops are armored up here and the general is nearby. Watch as the Gold Wood, a mighty fine unit, as are the Lorian Swordmasters. The Gondorian forces here are pretty much toast. They'll fight to the last, I think, because the general is so close. Things aren't looking too promising there for Gothmog. Wow, okay, so the Shield Maiden took out Rune's General there. Should we make fun of Awesome for getting killed by a girl? Pretty much. Let's not forget, Arwen did kill the Witch King. Uh, 
Uh, looks like Fenners will win there. We've got enough troops, I think, to win here. It's 92 to 93. So what assets do these hackers have that would give them an edge over the defenders that are left? I'm not seeing them. We've got Joran Paul now. Gretham Marine Dance should probably head in and help the forces here finish off the Barrow Whites. Our ally lies dead, slain by the enemy. We must help his men avenge him. And we've got War Brothers and Bud Bath around. Right? Can be catastrophic. Centuries I turned around in the nick of time. Barbath rightly avoiding them. Here was Joey, but now Joey needs to get over and support his allies. I don't think the defense have fallen back. I think what we're seeing here is what we're going to get. All right, we've got one unit here of elderly archers that are being now focused down by the war riders. I actually wonder why Joran is running them back. Actually. I should probably fire on them. Both of should charge into the war riders, make sure they you know, make sure they blunt their charge. Can you do the caliber on firing him? Trying to take out the other enemy archers. We got more walks falling. Ninety-five to ninety-five. Jeez. Okay, we've got the Engmar general here. It looks like he didn't bring witches after all. Fancy that. Joran had a chance here to take out the Engmar general, but he, he maybe he didn't see it. Okay, he's trying to take out the Lothorian troops. I personally would have taken out the general first. Some of the guard he was trying to kill the Guaita Rochido. Tsunami's trying to escape with his general. Oh, turn around, awesome. Turn around, turn around. Solid charge there from the walls. 96 to 96. Potentially, I think that's Joran's general there. Joran could lose his general. If he too is not careful. Not the end of the world, I suppose, but you know, still, it's not good. Watch it. But he's not trying to escape either. Okay, now he is. The general might get away. Got hit. Well, his sword master's broke. I 
Oh, could you unleash his general here? No, his general stands up to the charge. And now the walls are broken. Alright guys, we're back. And we found the last surviving Athelian Ranger. This is the first time I've actually seen the Athelian Rangers. And he's all by his lonesome. 97 to 97. And Joran's out of ammo now. They've got the Kingdom of Kelborn firing, and they've been firing him for a little while here. As you can see, they've taken some bites out of Joran here and there as Joran retreated. Okay, we've got some Medusa Guard up here from Nevin, and we have some, well, what's left of the Lord's Hunting Pack here, from Bad Bath. They're trying to get a better angle on the defending forces. Alright, the two armies have turned to face one another. Awesome's got some, well, one Dragon's Wrap, Swine and Dragon's Wrap kills, remember? Barrowite's on the way. That fire's come from the last hunting pack there. Okay, so they're trying to take down the watchers as fast as possible. Watchers here being attacked from three sides. This is the only side they're not being hit from. Comes to Kindred. So is general. What's that? Some Eastern crossbows there. Two surviving. Uh, other than the archers up against them, they might win. It's Archie and it gets Archie in it. Yeah, to 98. Bounce of power in favour of the attackers here. Both of Marinda needs to break off immediately to try and take out the general. Watches it down to 14. Straight to the heart. There's Angmar. Well, Elden and the Archers won that fight. I thought they would struggle. I thought that with the combination of Bonded Archers and Kindred and Kelleborn, it might swing things back in the attacker's favour.
Your elderly spear and the last surviving member. Ninety nine to ninety nine. Things still not looking up here for the defenders. We have three L's here facing off against the general. Still gotta take out the barrel watts. Okay, there goes Isaac guys, General. He's probably just trying to stay alive, eh? Okay, Joey's general finally goes down. You know, elderly speedmen coming out of nowhere. I thought they were all dead. With the exception of that guy over there. Is he still fighting? No, he might be dead. Mutually assured destruction. Uh, looks like we got our winner. It looks like Joran is just going to edge out. And so I will times two speed it, as it is just them fighting against Barrow Whites here, and they're clearly. Oh, hang on! I was going to say, clearly going to win, and the troll came out of nowhere. Where did this troll come from? The finish should still be able to win here. Yeah, there he goes. I swear that's the last surprise. Victory is ours. Let it be a salve upon our wounds. And that is it. So that was a hard full victory. Well done to Jordan and his team for it. Jordan got 2,545. Awesome Boss at 2,225. Gothmark here 1604. Lord Tatsumi, 733. Joey Wan Kenobi, 1031. Tsunami, 744. Blood Athlegat, 732. And Nevin, 1281. Okay, kill counts here for drawing. God Helm here, 319. Elderly Arches, 218. Nunchina Warriors, range from 65 to 130. Breath of Marine Day, 199. Breath of Arthane, 111. Elderly Spearman, 142 to 170. Another century, 73 to 100. Brunei River Wards, 73 to 118. Both our Rochador, 333. And that is that. So, if you guys did enjoy this replay, and want to see your own features here on this channel, you can send them to my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com. You can post them to me directly on the Discord, or you can post them to the Battle Replay sub channel on my Discord server at Scouts Reconnaissance. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button to support the video and the channel. Those really help out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already. 
and tick that bell for notifications so you stay up to date with all the latest battles as they drop. Thank you to Joran for sending me the replay once again. This is Scouts of Lieutenant signing off. Fallout, my fellow Scouts. See you in the next Reforged battle.